Good day, folks, and welcome to the IT Way. My name is Joanne, and this is one of many videos that we have in our membership portal here and in the description below that is ties into the Cisco Meragi Certification Blueprint. You're going to see all information and tools that you're going to have for you to go from zero to hero in everything about Cisco Meragi portfolio. So if you are interested in that, you can go to the description below. Enjoy this video and see you the next one. Now we're gonna go to a section that is very fun. And I hope that you can follow me through because I'm gonna talk a lot about roaming and, and devices and subnets and IP addresses. Before jumping into what layer three roaming is, I just wanna step back a little bit to describe this specific topology because we're gonna see a pre and post layer three roaming and understand why do you need layer three roaming in the first place. So let's talk about this topology. So we can find this topology traditionally in big campus or universities or in big places when you need a lot of different VLANs and even you have a building and you need a different VLAN in each floor. And that's what we're gonna see here. Let's go from top to down. Here we can see this is the ISP or the internet. That's okay. You have a router or the router which connects to the internet. You have a firewall that is connects here, layer three switch that is talking to all your servers in the core, and then you have your whole network. So let's say the distribution, let's say here is each building. You have building A, building B, and building C. So in this campus, we have three different buildings. Each building will have different floors. So we can say that this is floor one, floor two, the same with building C, floor one, floor two, which is gonna have a lot of switches. And we're gonna concentrate in building B. Building B has three floors as well. Floor one, which is this one, second floor and third floor. What is mentioning here is that regardless of the floor, you have the management VLAN is one. We don't care too much about it, but it's just showing and telling you that VLAN one is dot three, dot four, dot two, just for the management of the IP address of the management of these devices. The same thing with the access points. This is access point in second floor. So let's put it here. We don't forget. Second floor, I have dot 10, the same management VLAN 1 and the same management VLAN 1, so doesn't care. And this one is the first floor, so let's put it here, first floor. Now we have the difference, right? This access point is the second floor and this access point the first floor. So based on the design, because this is a big network and other bunch of reasons more, they have different VLANs in each floor. So this floor has VLAN 100, you can see it here, and it's 192.168.100.0.24. So the clients connected to this access point are gonna get an IP address from this range. And there you go. They have 192, 168, 100, 120. In the first floor, they have a different VLAN, just to complicate stuff more, VLAN 200. And from those 200 IP addresses, clients that are underneath these access points, first floor, there, there you go, is gonna get the 200.43. So that's what happens? Now we're gonna talk about roaming. So let's say that these two devices are the same and we're gonna move in just like going downstairs from second floor to the first floor. So what is gonna happen? You first floor here is gonna have 120 and you want to roam. So since you are roaming and this VLAN doesn't exist in this specific floor, you cannot keep the same IP address which that will happen in the regular layer two roaming. And that's what we call it, just regular roaming. You're gonna keep the IP address. In this case, you cannot do it because there is no configuration in this access point with VLAN 100. So when you try to go downstairs, since there is no specific roaming mechanism to do that, you're gonna disassociate for this access point and then associate again. When you associate again, you're gonna go through the association process, the dedication association, and you're gonna ask for an IP address again to the DHCP that is here, and it's gonna give you an IP address in VLAN 200, which is the one that everybody knows in floor one, first floor. So when you associate, you're gonna get the 200.43. Well, you tell me, Joanne, but that's good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get another IP address. Well, that's good enough for you probably, but if you are in the phone call through your laptop and you are just watching a video or anything specific that it's very sensitive to these kind of changes, this is gonna disrupt the communication of the traffic that you might have or close any sessions that you had before. 
So if that happens, it means that it's not technically roaming. We're just the authenticating, the associating from one access point and authenticating, associating again to another access point. So that breaks the technicality to say that you're roaming from one place to another one. So we need to solve this. We need to find a way to have seamless roaming between different VLANs, between different buildings, in between different floors. So that's why layer three roaming means, and that's what we're gonna see next.